The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to travel and adventure with Aniso Fandama and Gareth Errett in Romance on the Chobe River. Suzanne Prinsloo is the only woman in Africa piloting the legendary Tiger Moth aeroplane. Conservationist Zandile Ntlovu inspires the next generation to share her deep love of the ocean. Mini Dlamini rocks this tosser French style at France's biggest festival of high fashion. Nature boy Ryle de Mornay challenges us to live more with the life we've got. Then, artist, producer, label founder and lover of nature, DJ Tira's chart-topping career has given him quite a head for heights. People take adventures into the unknown on the promise of great discovery and a similar faith saw presenter Aniso Fandama and Gareth Errett enter a reality TV show in search of love. A match made in television, their relationship has flourished and a shared passion for travel brought them here to the banks of Botswana's Chobe River. So, Kroniso and I have a very unique love story. We met on a reality television dating show. Um, I was one of her suitors. Gareth really is an incredible person. Yes, we might have met in an unconventional way, but we have such a conventional relationship. We argue and we laugh at silly things and have our own language. And now we're here, almost two years later. What I love most about Kroniso is her zest for life, her perpetually positive attitude. I think she's my soulmate and uh, I love her to bits. The thing I love most about Gareth is his ability to bring me back down to earth. I can be like, wow, life is amazing. And Gareth's like, it is amazing, but we can take it easy, we can take it slow. And he literally is my calm to my storm. Anytime I'm stressed or afraid or disappointed, I know who to call. He's definitely my soulmate. Travel for us, myself and Kroniso, it's quite a sacred thing. So when we do travel together, it's, it's incredibly special. And being here, we just left the, the Chobe Marina Lodge and we on the, the Chobe River. And I think, speaking on behalf of both of us, this is one of the most incredible things we've ever done in our entire life. Wonder soon turned to awe as they came across a family of elephant at the floating salad bar. Guys, there are three elephants uh, eating behind us. We're on the Chobe River. It's the first time in this one I've ever seen something like this. It's absolutely incredible. I want one. Kunisa wants me to buy an elephant for her birthday. It's not a huge ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a huge ask. <laughs> Nature really is just breathtaking. There's a lot more marshland here. To see elephants enjoying themselves in the water and eating the, the vegetation in the water. So cute. It's a completely new experience. In South Africa, we obviously see elephants, but to see them like this, yeah. in this setting, together, in this moment right now, happy is an, it's an understatement. A visit to Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe had long been on Gareth and Penisau's bucket lists. An anthropologist doing her master's degree, Miss Fandama found what bridge builders did here almost a century ago to be as impressive as the falls themselves. And pretty soon the couple had talked each other into bungee jumping this feat of human engineering. Oh, the big air explosion! Hey, the big air! Woo! He's afraid okay. of heights. Ja. As Gareth readied himself, we weren't sure if fear, excitement, or both was setting in. What do you want to say? Adrenaline, you know. <laughs> 111 meters! As the largest sheet of falling water, Victoria Falls claims its place as one of the wonders of the natural world. We're on our way to the bungee now. I'm trying to channel my nervous energy into getting hopped up to the border of Zambia and Big Falls town. <sighs> yeah, I know, I'm feeling, I don't, I don't know how I'm feeling, but it's 
Let's do this. Woo! After getting strapped in and secured, it was up to Gareth to go first. With the thunderous sounds of the falls cheering him on, he went headfirst towards the raging waters. I'm feeling nervous, but I'm not scared yet. But I'm well, nervous. One. one there. After watching her partner plummet headfirst over the waters of the mighty Zambezi River below, Aniso opted for the bridge swing. A different, albeit still thrilling, experience. Woo! I did it! So we've just finished. And as you can hear, my voice is a bit hoarse from screaming. I don't quite know what to say. It was the feeling of falling and that there's a feeling that rushes through your body that I've never felt in my entire life. So I think to describe it, I actually don't have the words. Well, I didn't bungee jump. I did a swing and hey, lung. Ayo. <laughs> Guys, life is for the living. One, two, one, two. Ay, An incredible feat of engineering saw the construction of a bridge intended to allow trains to feel the spray of the falls as they crossed over between the two countries it borders. Completed at the turn of the century in 1905, today an experience is offered by Shearwater Adventures that allows visitors to feel transported back to those times. I am the engineer who supervised the construction of the Victoria Falls Bridge. We've just had this beautifully curated experience where one of the, the local Zimbabwean men takes you through a, almost a, a performance where he reenacts uh, George and Bolt, who was the engineer who designed this bridge in the 1920s, and he almost pretends to be George and Bolt himself. We chose a single span steel, paraboric arch type of a design is meeting all these requirements. It takes you through all the details, the, how the bridge was constructed in the 1920s, incredibly interesting. And then from there we went on to the, the bridge tour. And the bridge tour was really just interesting and just so beautiful to see the falls from the other side, because we jumped away from the falls. And it was really beautiful to have the spray hitting us and we learned so much about the bridge, how it was built, how it's been raised, how there's pedestrian walkways now, and about the train system. And I think between the bungee jumping and that educational experience, it's a, a beautifully curated sort of encompassing the whole, the whole experience was awesome. The water from the falls creates a rainforest ecosystem, which brings with it a unique array of flora and fauna, which otherwise would not be found in this part of our continent. A labyrinth of pathways on offer provide for a myriad of breathtaking vantage points, from which travelers like Meniso and Gareth can imagine what it was like for David Livingston when he first arrived here. We don't have words, this is... Absolutely incredible. I, I mean, we are literally standing at a crevice on the side of a cliff that is 93 meters high. And we're shouting because we can barely hear ourselves, our thoughts. We don't exist right now. We are just a part of this beautiful force of nature. I am so grateful to be here. It's even making me emotional. Yo! Yo! Wow! And to experience this together is truly something special. We not in our wildest dreams did we ever think this would come possible. Yeah, I can't even talk. <laughs> I mean, I'm crying, so come to Zimbabwe, guys! After drying off, taking to the skies is certainly the best way to appreciate the magnitude of the beauty below. The privilege brings with it the opportunity to observe the natural borders between Zimbabwe and Zambia. We got into the helicopter, it has these beautiful glass rounded windows and a glass bottom and you get to see every part of the falls and they are mighty. When you're jumping off a bridge, bungee jumping or whatever, you still understand the might of it. But when you see it from that perspective, it's almost a massive, it's crazy, it's crazy, like this crazy. massive crack in the earth. Yeah. 
It's breathtaking, it's absolutely beautiful. We've been meandering here on foot, so it was quite special to see that from the air. And everything looks quite different from the air. Yeah. And yeah, no, we feel we're extremely grateful. That was incredible. I'm Actually, it's just bre breathtaking. No, there's no words to describe it. It's just it. breathtaking. Like, it literally takes your breath away. Southern Africa continues to exceed expectations, reminding us all to get out and explore all that is on offer and embrace a zest for life. Next up, pilot Susan Prinsloer is the only woman flying the legendary 90-year-old Tiger Moth across African skies. At the age of 90, your gogo doesn't want to be told she's great just for being around. Like this Tiger Moth aeroplane first built in 1930, she'd rather show all the things she still does so well. That's what made one particular pilot fall in love with this aircraft. Good day, Insider SA. I'm Susan Prinsler. I'm at Brackburn Aero Club today. I'm going to be flying my Tiger Moth today and enjoy the journey with me. Um, my journey with flying started approximately 17 years ago. I started flying micro lights. Someone introduced me into a micro light flight one day, and the next day I decided that's what I want to do and I was 36 at the time and a week later I started training for my microlight license and then I went on to helicopter flying which I do mostly these days then I got involved into a flight school at Grand Airport where they operated the Tiger Moth and that's where I fell in love with the Tiger Moth so I bought this lovely lady Bravo Golf Lima it's just an amazing aircraft by day, Susan is a pilot doing commercial flights, sports events, aerial photography, and advanced helicopter training. Guys, welcome to my office. This is where I relax between flights and do some office work. Um, as you can see, I have all my aircraft models here, and this is my baby. The Yellow Tiger Moth model that you see here was also an aircraft in the flight school which was used for conversion training for pilots as well as scenic flights for clients. Later on I acquired uh, Bravo Golf Lima which is my current baby and passion. She also flew in the flight school for conversion trainings and scenic flights but I only fly her privately now and I will take you around and show you my precious baby and my passion. Before his famed World War II bomber, the Mosquito, aircraft designer Jeffrey de Havilland was best known for this beauty. Guys, this is my baby, uh, Bravo Golf Lima. She's called Bakhatleti, that's her nickname. She served in the Royal Air Force and she also served in the South African Air Force. And later in the 1950s, she was sold as a private aircraft. And I'm the lucky owner of Bakhatleti at the moment. As you can see, she's a tail dragger because she drags her tail. The tail is low. This aircraft has a lot of special features, can I say, that other aircraft doesn't have. She doesn't have brakes. The pilot sits in the back. The pilot cannot really see out the front unless it's a tall person. I'm short, so I don't see anything. So I literally stick my head out the side to see whether I'm taking off and landing straight. So many pilots who went on to fly jet fighters, the Concorde or massive jumbos, learned to fly in a Tiger. One thing I forgot about Buck Hatleti is that she still has her original seat belts dating from the day she was built, which makes it very special. They are very old and they look shabby, but they're original and they're still attached with the original cables. So the main reason why people are still so interested in the Tiger Moth is because it's a vintage aircraft. There's not many aircraft in the world turning 90 years old and still airworthy and actively flying. And also the fact that it served in the Royal Air Force and in the South African Air Force as basic military trainers and it's still airworthy and flying. 
Another thing about the Tiger Moth is that there's no electrical system in the Tiger Moth. So the radio works by a bike battery, literally, which gets charged overnight, and that is your communication. When we come up to these two switches, these are my two magneto switches. Once I switch these switches in the on position, my prop will be live and I'll be starting my engine swinging the prop. Another interesting feature about the Tiger Moth, the engine is installed inverted. In other words, it's upside down and that is for better visibility over the nose. Not that I have any visibility even with it installed upside down. <laughs> and to complement my attire, I have this lovely vintage helmet, uh, which looks exactly like the uh, ones they used uh, during World War II. And to complement my leather helmet, I have this vintage goggles, which complements the vintage look. Next comes the difficult part. Uh, this aircraft is quite a handful to take off and land because she's a tail dragger, first of all. Secondly, because she doesn't have brakes. So the first thing you need to do taking off, obviously, is full power. And then you need to ease forward on your control stick to lift your tail so that the aircraft is in a level position to build speed for takeoff. And if you push your stick too far forward, uh, you can fall over onto your nose, damaging your prop and your engine. If the tail is too low, you build speed too slow and you'll also not be able to take off. So the aircraft needs to be in that exact level position and that takes a lot of practice. Just another interesting bit about the Tiger Moth is that once I've started my aircraft, I've checked that my oil pressure is sufficient and I've set my altitude. I don't use the instruments in my aircraft. How does it feel to be the only woman in Africa flying the Tiger Moth? It's quite overwhelming. I only found out last week that I am the only woman in Africa holding a license on Tiger Moth and one of seven women in the world flying the Tiger Moth. So it's still very new to me and I must say it feels very overwhelming and uh, it's quite an amazing feeling. Any machine still spreading its wings like this at the age of 90 is rightly known as one of the greats. So too the dashing women pilot who is keeping the legend alive in our African skies. Coming up, we meet the Black Mermaid beneath the sea and Mini Dlamini rocks Paris in Jessica Molebatsi style. Sponsored by Capitec. Zandile Ndlovu is a freediving instructor and conservationist. Her passion in life is enjoying and sharing the wonders of the ocean and inspiring others to love and protect our natural environment. She is fondly known to her followers as the Black Mermaid. How I end up being a Joburg mermaid is in 2016, going through the most towards the end of my marriage, I go to Bali and I end up going on the snorkel trip that absolutely changes my life. And I just remember duck diving in, the first time me seeing beneath the surface of the water and everything changed. I felt home in a way that I had never ever felt home before. And I just knew that this had to be my life. I had to find a way to make it my life. I was in corporate, but also I used to play hockey. I was mountain biking for years. And then the ocean called and there I was on my way to her. But the larger part is Joburg living as we know Joburg living to be. Moving to Cape Town has been the most amazing thing. The ocean can be free and you can access it at any time. I live in the water. I love the crispness of the water, but also the magic of this kelp forest brings me back every single morning without fail. And I'm in love. <laughs> Through the work of her foundation, Zandile is opening up conversations about the importance of sustaining our oceans. Free diving makes her feel fully present as she observes the wonders of the world beneath the waves. Being underwater for me is the most spiritual thing. 
I've, I often speak about how when I go into the water, I ask for permission. And when I leave, I give gratitudes because I realize that I come from a long family of strong beliefs around water. You know, water is a spiritual place and to be able to partake in her is such a massive privilege. Becoming South Africa's first black freediving instructor was the most amazing thing. Finding out was like, really? But for me, I realized that it was not an individual achievement. I believe that it is a country's achievement. It talks about a country's ability to dream despite where she comes from. And I think that's a very powerful thing as we write our own narrative going into the future as South Africa. Foraging is such an important part of each and every person. Like we should know how to get our own food from the source. And I think the most important thing is knowing to do it sustainably and in a responsible way. So like when you look at here in Cape Town, I went on a course to learn about foraging, to learn which kelp you can pick and which you can't, and what animals that you find in the ocean that are actually you're able to forage. In order to be able to forage, you do require a permit. And that's important because that's how we know that we're doing it sustainably. And things need to be measured. We know this in order for us to be able to preserve our pristine ocean environment. So that was an amazing dive. I managed to get some sea lettuce for lunch today, along with some, <laughs> some kelp. And the best part of the dive mermaid coins. These come off some of the mollusks in the ocean and if you're lucky you get gifted a mermaid coin. Very very special find. Every single time I'm in the water I always come back and I'm just like famished. So we're gonna make lunch. I'm so excited to share about the salad that we're gonna make today. It is obviously a kelp inspired salad. So what we do have here is we got some kelp, but we also got some sea lettuce that we're also just gonna give a little bit of a boil just so that it becomes a little bit tender so it's easier to digest. And we're gonna be serving that with broccoli and spinach and chickpeas, avo, mushrooms, jalapenos, and this delicious pear, and served with a bit of mustard. It's an absolute favorite for me. I love chickpeas, I love avos, I love kelp, I love everything that's here, so it's gonna be delicious. We have our beautiful bowl of delicious, nutritious earth goodness. And what's also interesting and I wanted to share is when I'm done cooking my kelp, I often keep the water afterwards and I use it as kelp tea. So I will have it for the days that follow afterwards and nothing goes to waste. <laughs> In the tradition of our Khoi Khoi forebears who lived off and in harmony with the ocean, Zandile Unglovu offers a view of how our marine economy can sustain us and endure. If the ocean cannot speak, she will be its voice. From an ambassador of our seas to a herald of our traditional fashion, when SA designer Jessica Molly Batsi was invited to show at the capital event of French fashion, she took a unique French tosser range and knew that only one woman could rock its bridal showstopper. I'm Mini Domini and we're at Paris Fashion Week and I couldn't be more excited to be showcasing the Nolutando collection by Jessica Jane. It's a bit surreal coming from South Africa to be able to showcase at the Ritz in Paris. It's something that you don't expect but always work towards and for it to actually happen is just, it's amazing. It's such a huge moment in my career. This whole range is just focused around representing South Africa and all the positives within South Africa. We are a third world country and we do have many challenges, but there's also just so many positives that sometimes we forget to focus on. And I'm so happy to be able to have the opportunity to do that through clothing. The ideas embodied in this range were ones she was finally getting to see on their feet. 
When you're making the garments, they're at the machine or on a working mannequin, and that's how you see them. But today was literally to fit the models, see which models fit best into which garments, and see how the clothes lie and sit, and them in motion when the models were walking, and all the sparklies and the lights, and yeah, it was, it was fun, I enjoyed it. Mini Lamini will be modeling the showstopper for me. You know, she's the most fitting person to be with me in this moment coming from South Africa, showcasing in Paris. She's always been the celebrity that gave me, you know, the chance. She held my hand. So coming from nobody to being a designer that's showcasing in Paris, Mini has always been there. She's always been very willing to help me. It's just, it's amazing to have her re representing South Africa in my my clothing and my garments that represent South Africa and it's just also a beautiful journey of sisterhood and us two ladies and females supporting each other the way we have and I often speak about females that are in a position to uplift other females so I'm getting to a point where I may be able to uplift other females that I choose to in the same way that Minnie is helping to uplift me. From launching the brand on the floor of her flat to building it while starting a family with husband Wandile Molebatsi, she always had Mini in her corner. Jessica and I have actually been friends for a really long time and I'm just so excited to see how much she's grown. She's an incredible designer and I think her work speaks for itself. Um, it's been an honor to be able to have worn her clothes from day one and to see so many beautiful celebrities in South Africa wear her garments. I think this is just the beginning of many more amazing, amazing work and pieces that we're going to see from Jessica Jane. This is such a full circle moment for both of us. For someone about to debut on this grand stage, Jessica was so chilled. I'm actually feeling pretty calm, you know. Um, everyone keeps telling me, like, you're so calm, you're not stressed. And I think it's just because I'm really prepared and I'm really confident about what I'm going to show. One look at the collection had the models, hosts and press all asking one question. The inspiration behind the Nolutando range is basically it's representing South Africa and the many different cultures we have in South Africa. I am an English-speaking white South African, so we have many bloodlines. Mine is French, Norwegian, Scottish and British. And I'm married into a Tswana Kosa family. And in doing so, I got my married name, which was Nolutando, which means the one that gives love. And essentially this range, you know, I call it a French Kosa range because I really wanted it to embrace where I came from and what I've chosen to embrace. And make them work so harmoniously together as as we should be at home with each other we should just be one and harmonious with each other as this range is one and harmonious with itself my favorite thing about this collection is the fact that it truly celebrates South African women and hopefully it inspires us to celebrate women across the globe. It is truly feminine, it is truly diverse and to see all of the ethnicity that is being celebrated in a modern way is exactly what the future of fashion needs. It's so fresh, it's so now and I couldn't be more proud to be a part of Jessica Jane's Paris Fashion Week debut. Paris Fashion Week is absolutely massive and to be able to see a woman who has started out with a passion and with a dream to be able to show at one of the biggest platforms in the world and one of the biggest stages on the world, it's an absolute honor and to get to walk Paris Fashion Week, I mean, it's something of dreams. A dream team putting the fusion of Tossa French style center stage and making it a platform for more young female African designers. Just ahead, Ryle de Mornay found life and meaning in the great outdoors and wants us to also take the leap. Our next stop is a day's clurfing with a life-saving hero who many owe their lives to. Known as the fastest man on sand, he has grown his passion for life into a successful TV career and is now best known on Expresso Morning Show by another handle. 
What is up, you beautiful people? Nature Boy here, otherwise known as Ryle de Mone, and we are out in the thick of it. We are in Arden Tots Holland's incredible playground. This is the penultimate adventure when it comes to hiking. And of course, with it being the new year, it's a time for new beginnings, a new opportunity to slay away and maybe reinvent yourself. Now, I brought my buddies along. I've got Lange and Tolly. This is the team man and Darren Peterson. These guys are my buddies since sub A, so I'm hoping to get some fun and action out of the two of them. You guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's shake and bake. Yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> It's play time. Of Ryle's friends, Tarek is the action man and fellow lifesaver at home on the beach. Darren is the producer and drummer, happiest in studio. Both were out of their natural element in this hot and tot Holland nature reserve. 7,000 hectares of mountain gorges, home to 1,300 fainbos species and 110 bird species. What makes this place so special is we have the tea water school of them, which uh, provides water to Cape Town. Uh, we have uh, the Steenbras Dam that uh, provides water to Cape Town. And all those rivers starts on this reserve. The town, Refiers on the End, is named after the Refiers on the End River, which starts on the reserve. So this is a mountain catchment area and uh, quite important. It was nearly a Ryle and Friends catchment area for this spinnacle. How Ryle became the poster boy for this lifestyle had unlikely beginnings in his business degree and early career. I think Nature Boy started because of this. I was someone chasing success. I was thinking that the degree, the suit, the money was all about what meant happiness. And that's what I chased until I realized that it wasn't filling any of the holes that I thought it would. I worked uh, my part off and I didn't get the stimulation that I thought I was chasing all that time until I found it right over here. And this is where Nature Boy was essentially born. The more time I spent in this incredible playground, the more uh, alive I started to feel. And I think when I started shifting my focus away from material value and financial gain and started seeing beauty for what it actually was, that's when I realized that this is the office that I want to be in. Whew. Oh, it is absolute magic out here. Jens, how are you feeling? Yeah, loving it. Still keeping yeah, up? <laughs> so we just dipped into the magic right now and we crossed the Buchus Kloof River, stepping straight out of that and around the corner is our final destination already. It's got this ominous feel, the clouds are just above us. Ah, oh, it's already ticking the bucket list. <laughs> Fact of the day. <laughs> so right down there is where they call the area Junction Pool and it's also the Fee Sauna End. So that'll kind of be the end of our Kloof mission, but that technically runs all the way through to Tiervata's Kloof and that's our drinking water, so no peeing in the river. Totally. <laughs> Who's the nervous one here? Who's the nervous Get those one here? Sorted. <laughs> this is the privilege of you guys having me on the trail. I stand in front, I lead the way, and I open up the trail. Mm. Guardium Leviosa. See how protected you guys. doesn't need to come with screaming as well. <laughs> <laughs> you go in front of me. I'm okay, but I'm not a leader. I'm not a nature boy. Hey. I'm an eyebrow. We sacrifice you, I take the hits for everyone. <laughs> All three amigos would have to suck it up for the eight-hour gauntlet to come. One which Marius announced with just enough menace. Suicide Gorge, uh, that is one of the two clothing roads that we have. So yeah, what you do is you hike your way up the mountain and then you jump your way down the mountain, come down with the river, the pools. But once you stand on top of that waterfall, you go down, you really find out how long a second is. Guys, welcome to Suicide Coach. I hope you brought your wetsuits and your big boy pants. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. 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 Go. So we just dropped into the gorge and as we arrive, things are taking a little bit of a change. And I mean that literally, we are changing from our hiking gear and getting ready to put wetsuits on. This is making everything feel a lot more real. A little bit of nerves are creeping in and I think this is where the action really starts to happen. Usually when we are putting our wetsuits on, it's normally by the beach and it's always with this guy because we've been lifeguards since I don't know how long and we've been friends since Sabay, right? Sabay, yeah. Myself and Tully have been coaching uh, life-saving for so 
many years now. We've taken the sport in the country to the highest level, all the way to world champs. He's been my right hand man as well for some of my accolades, representing the country, representing uh, South Africa at world champs, and um, clapping so many records between the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, we've had so many incredible accomplishments. And not only that, but uh, having someone like this, he's hard, he's strong, he's the guy that I have with me that keeps the mind focused. And all throughout these years, I think it's the only man that I've really trusted 100% uh, when it comes to saving someone's life. And that's what we do best as lifeguards, eh? Yeah, we every day on the beach, saving lives, just doing the duty, the general duty and creating lifeguards was one of our biggest aspects as a head coach and a head teacher as well. Um, and we've had some hectic days, we've saved a number of lives, I would say over 50. I think we can reflect and start celebrating, so what do you say we do that right now? Are you ready for this one? Any day brother, any day, I'll follow you into war my friend. Let's go, let's go. Woo! <laughs> So we are officially inside the coach. We suited up. Oh, and it's a little bit frosty. Hey, we're gonna come alive today, people. Hiking in the water and clothing is very, very different to your normal average hike. Firstly, you're obviously literally walking in the river. So every single step that you take, you gotta be very cautious. You could be walking on a rock, you could be walking on sand, you never really know. And the fact that we have such rich tannins when it comes to the botanicals and the fainbos in the area, it means that the water is also a little bit dark too. So you really have to navigate properly. Coupled with the fact that you are also using sometimes your hands and your feet to get over certain sections. You're bouldering, you're hopping, you're climbing, you're scrambling. Every single move requires a lot of stabilization, core control, and using almost every element of your body and your strength that you have. The first task is a natural water slide. It's based on this crazy slope of a waterfall which has a covering full of moss and you kind of just have to find the line, get into the slide and it throws you straight into the first pool. And that sets you off for the rest of the mayhem and crazy action to come. The difference between ending up in Rafir Sona End or the ER is a guide. I would recommend to everybody, it's essential that you have a guide when you do an adventure like this. Every rock pool has a different depth, and that means each one could be dangerous if you don't know where you are actually jumping. And that's the beauty of having Francois around. He allows us to obviously maximize on all the fun, staying in the good lane, and not having to worry too much about the risks. We're approaching our first big technical jump. This one's known as the Widowmaker. Now you really have to have your wits about you. It's a narrow jump. You really need to hit the mark specifically after you launch. And oh, let me tell you, once you hit the bottom of the water, it's full send after that. If Ryle is the undisputed king of beach sprints in international competitive life-saving, these gorges have a way of humbling you. Generally, the mountain for me wasn't a very common place. And the more time I spent in it, the more confidence I grew within myself. It's crazy how you come out here with all these fears and misconceptions. Am I gonna be able to climb the mountain? Am I gonna be able to swim? Will I be able to hold on? And it takes something as simple as just jumping off that rock and just doing it for you to actually realize that I'm more equipped than I ever thought before. And the more I did that, the more I started to discover who I was and started realizing that, hey, there's something more here that I wanna share with the rest of the world. As a learn to swim instructor and lifesaver, Tarek heads into dangerous waters daily. Creative artist, producer, and drummer Darren needed a little encouragement. What it do, what it do? So we've done a lot of sliding, a lot of navigating, abseiling, and some small jumps, and now we are getting to the big stuff. Some of these jumps go up to 22 meters high. On average, it's around 12 to 14 meters, and now it's getting serious. As you step up to take that jump, everything hits you at once it's so overwhelming because you look so far down and you think to yourself am i gonna do this am i gonna make this jump Whew. halfway into the gorge already and it has been an immense magic amount of fun right now we've been sliding yeah yeah dude we've been jumping yes we've been diving we've been swimming <laughs> are you feeling bro but i mean i honestly feel like i've pushed myself beyond because this is a, an extreme phobia man i it's so bruh it's definitely stepping out dude 
I'm proud of you, bro. You're stepping up, dialing in. Almost time for the big ones that are coming up. I know you're going to be soaking that. Yes, uh, it's been ones? amazing. Honestly, just sending it on top of the rocks. Us, this is what we look for. Full send. Full send, my friend. You've got to send it. Knowing guides have tested the depth, Ryle was happy to take the leap. Wow! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> well, for me, Ryle de Mornay, your nature boy, I can truly say that this is an adventure that has set me up for the year. I have endorphins rushing through me. My mana source of energy has been fulfilled by all this magic around me, and I'm ready to slay away. Maybe the message was that our favorite homegrown heroes are those who strike out boldly in new directions, then return to show the rest of us the way. Right after this, KZN's King of Kom, DJ Tira, heads for Cape Town to find the best view is not inside, it's on top. Sponsored by Capitec. Artist, producer, and label founder DJ Tira lives a hundred moments a day. From London to the mother city, the man is a force of nature. Hey yo, what up? Touchdown Cape Town. I've got a little bit of business and pleasure that I'm gonna be mixing. So yeah, follow me as I get through the day. Let's go! This is a high-tech holiday with an automated grand piano playing while an AI robot tells you which restaurant or cocktail bar will suit you. And Capitec's digital banking is DJ Tierra's partner in ensuring that he does not slow down for a beat in his travels, creativity or career. I like the visual card because it's easier, safer and quick to use. I don't have to carry cash around, I can just use my visual card. And basically you can activate it for free on your Capitec app. DJ Tira is a boy who grew up in Kwasabisa, which is a northern KwaZulu Natal. Came to Deben to study at University of Natal. While studying in University of Natal, developed this interest in DJing. And later on, now he has a record company called Afrotainment, also an events company. So, in between, man, we sign artists, we also do events. For me, it's very, very important that first of all, I have to enjoy my life. That's why I love traveling, I love seeing places, I love eating good food, I love entertaining people. Also, the focus is very, very important for me. When I go to studio, I'm going to studio to make music, to make hits. I think it's very, very important that if you live a clean life, you get to go far in life. I think I've got 21 years, 22 years in the music industry right now. The discipline, I know that is very, very important because if it wasn't for the discipline that I have, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I live my life to the fullest, but I have limits that guide me to make sure that my life is chilled, relaxed, easy. My call your parents, yes. <laughs> Today, I want to enjoy myself in Cape Town, guys. So I think sky high right is something that I need to experience this time around. I was kind of scared though, because yo, I saw the show in shorts that is kind of crazy, but I'm that guy who's not scared of anything. So I'm going in, deep in. Hotel Sky has 30 floors, with the 30th floor and the 29th floor being the rooftop where the ride is located. The ride itself is 33 meters, and once you're at the topmost point, you are 134 meters above the ground floor of the building. It is the highest ride on top of a hotel in Africa. So on a clear day, the ride has spectacular views of Table Mountain, Robben Island on a very, very clear day. You've got the ocean, you've got Lion's Head, and you've got the Cape Town Stadium, which is amazing from where we're at. In terms of speed, it is between 75 and 100 kilometers per hour, depending on the weight that's on the ride, which will leave you between two and three G-forces that's felt on the body. Hey yo, the moment of truth has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Sky High Ride. Woohoo! 
I'm asking in Saint Jamias. As you work, so you can choose any seat you like, sir. Once you are seated, you just have to sit all the way to the back. Rest your arms on the side. We'll close all the bars immediately. Once it's closed, we will strap you up, and then yeah, we'll send you up to the moon and bring you back down to ground. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> oh Look at it, guys. Yeah. yeah, let's do this. A little bit. Hey. So for that time, ladies and gentlemen, how long is it? Uh, all in all, it's about two to three minutes, the ride. Depending on how long we leave you on top, but we'll leave you there for about 30 seconds to a minute. Then, yeah, we'll drop you. But it goes slowly up and we'll come fast down. The ride, once it gets to the top, can hold you up there for about three minutes. When you're up there and you think you're just settled, we drop you at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, depending on the weight on the ride. And as you get to the bottom, your heart sinks right down to your stomach and you think you left your soul in the sky. There's a lot happening at Appertainment, man. I have to juggle between the family and the business. <laughs> you see? Hello? Hi, Dara. Could you please send us money for the sound system? Ah, OK, OK, cool. I'll take care of it now. OK. You see, this is a piece of transition that I need to take care of. And this KP Tech app has been saving my life. There's this immediate payment that I can be able to do with the KP Tech app. And with a charge of 750, I can clear money of up to 100,000 rand. So I pay for transaction immediate payment. Clean, perfect. Mwah. So you saw how DJ Dira gets hectic. And without the latest technology, and shout out to banks like Capitec that have this technology to save my life, to keep my life moving. That's my life, and I like it the way it is. Take care. If, like DJ Tira, you would like to live more in the moment, stand a chance of winning a thousand rand cash prize courtesy of Capitec. Simply reply to the competition post on the Insider SA social media platforms using hashtag Capitec Live Better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Uh, never feel good production. <laughs>